So let's start with inspiration. And uh, I'm just going to launch a poll now. Um, go ahead and let us know. Uh, th these are the same four questions we've been asking every week. Have you used an AI tool? How many times have you used ChatGPT? Of the top AI tools, which ones have you used? And have you saved money or time using these tools? One of the things that um, I was shocked to learn is you know, our usage of AI among this group uh, has reached almost 90%. The average business in the US, uh, only 11% of them, according to a poll by GoDaddy, is actually using AI. So I know a lot of you probably feel like you're ca catching up, like you're a little behind the curve. And I just want you to know that you are actually way ahead of the curve simply by the fact that you're here. Only one in 10 businesses are using AI. And so if you're using AI, you're, you're, you're ahead of the curve and congratulations. And so uh, please answer the poll, let us know how you're doing and, and absolutely let us know if you're saving hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I know that Jeff and Nicole and I are in the tens of thousands camp. Uh, and the further, the longer you are doing this, the more likely you'll join us there. Um, but it's exciting. I see now uh, when we ended last session, 80% of you had not uh, saved any money um, using a AI. When we started, 90% of you had not saved or made money. By the end, we got to 80%. Now, uh, Jeff, I want you to guess, what percentage of people have not yet saved or made money on AI? We started at 90, we got to 80. Now, what do you think we're at? 70? Nicole? I was going to say 75. 65% of us have now saved or made money. Nice. You know, this is awesome. I don't know how you feel, but I literally am feeling like excitement because I Good know. Job. <laughs> yeah, high five. Uh, high five, Jeff and Nicole. Um, we're, we're helping you guys make a difference. And, you know, we're in a slow economic slowdown. It's a tough time. That money you're saving or making through AI is really profound. And so congratulations to all of you, the, the one third of you who have figured out a way uh, to make this. Still, nobody has gotten into the tens of thousands camp, but if you stick with us, you will. Now, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of inspiration <laughs> that I've been getting just from the wiles of AI. First, I would like you to in invite you in the chat to tell us how have you been using AI in your business or personal life? How have you been using AI in your business or personal life? Please put your responses in the chat. I'll read some of a selection of them. One of my favorite use cases that is from my personal life is my neighbors were moving and they have this beautiful dog uh, called Wally. And Wally is this big German shepherd and he would mm. come onto our property and he would play with my children ages three and 10 and knock over my son, Henry, who's three years old. And um, Wally and his family had to move across town. And so we um, we were all very sad in our family about this. And we asked, so I asked ChatGPT to write a goodbye note uh, to my kids from Wally and the voice of Wally. And it did this really beautiful job. It uh, apologized to Henry for knocking him over. He promised it didn't mean it. Uh, he apologized to my wife for periodically taking a poop on our lawn and thank, you know, but he ensured us that his owner, Jeff, would always pick it up. And it was, um, it was really cute. We printed it out, mailed it to ourselves. My kids were like completely mystified how Wally had learned how to write. Um, that's, a, that's like one of the, the most fun ways to use ChatGPT and AI tools is just in your personal life and having fun with it. Um, I tell interactive bedtime stories with my son. So I'll ask him, hey, who do you want in the story? And he'll say, Alexander H. and Layla, you know, kids from his pre-K class. And then uh, I'll say, and what do you want it to be about? He'll say, I want it to be about milk and transport trucks. And I'm like, okay. So we create, you know, Henry's Milky Adventure and his kids are in it, his, his best friends are in it. And it's, it's just really fun. Uh, so, so share with me guys, how you guys uh, have been using AI in your uh, business or personal life. And I'll, I'm going to read a couple selections here. So um, so 
Kate Sullivan said email copy, social media posts. Allison Regley said copywriting and research. Stephanie Miller, great to see you here, drafting posts and editing copy. Jeff Cooper, you want to share your weird one? Oh, yeah. And this is, I'm such a nerd and normally use it for like copy and business stuff, but I started using it like a coach. Like I'd have hard decisions and I'd be like, I don't know what to do. What thing should I be thinking about when I'm trying to decide between A and B? And here's some context and coach me through all my decision making. It's cheaper love- than a therapist. Yeah, you know, that therapeutic uh, angle, if you guys haven't looked up Replica with a K, R-E-P-L-I-K-A, it's one of the most fast moving use cases uh, in all of AI, which is that therapeutic one. I know um, one, one of uh, uh, the, the one, one use case I heard from uh, in a recent CEO roundtable I ran was um, anyone who's ever been in sales know it's 10 no's for every yes, and that can be very demoralizing. And so whenever she would do a sales pitch, she would send her, uh, she would ask AI to give her an encouraging note back, letting her know she did a great job. (laughs) A little bit of reinforcement. I love that. Eldad said strategy docs for marketing strategy to copywriting also. I love that you're using it for strategy, Eldad. Karen Dax said we're using mid-journey for visualization and chat GPT for copy strategy and emails. So mid-journey is a great AI for images tool uh, used through Discord. Zachary Nichols said to help write campaign emails and social media strategy ideas. Daniel Bauer, uh, who uh, Bauer Web Services, and content creation topics, grammar checking. Those of us who aren't great writers, uh, you know, it's kind of like Grammarly on steroids. It's also a little bit like autocomplete on steroids. So um, Halima Shafiq said help with writing emails in community magazine articles. Patty Chavez said for menu descriptions, the use cases for food and restaurants is extraordinary. You can create nutrition labels. You can use it to help you figure out what you need to order in terms of food. Eventually, it'll probably be integrated through an API to your um, procurement. So if you wanted to buy bulk orders, you could probably do it through ChatGPT in a seamless way. Um, Rewriting content on my site, says Rafael Rosario, adding blogs and PPC keyword help, plus Instacart shopping. Armando said to assist my daughter with school as here's a personal one to assist my daughter with school essays and to develop introduction emails for marketing outreach. Um, Jeff, uh, you want to share your neighbor's use? Yeah, it sounds like it was kind of similar to to your use case, but but she uses ChatGPT to let her children create their own bedtime stories. So they pick the premise and she puts it in and then she reads them their custom bedtime story. I can't recommend it enough. I'm sure there's a version of this for romance as well. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe you guys can suggest some ideas. Um, Andrew White said uh, for his business, blog creation competitor and market research. So research, uh, just make sure they're not hallucinating. And then for personal, it's drafting responses to various personal communications. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've started to get emails where I know they're ChatGPT written. In fact, I called Jeff out once for that because uh, I could tell. I know how Jeff normally communicates, and then he wrote me this like beautiful, flowery, formal email, and I'm like, uh-uh, ChatGPT. What I've also noticed is uh, a lot of people are starting to add to their subject line, you know, assisted by ChatGPT, because it's kind of obvious if if you're not uh, editing it much when it, when ChatGPT writes it. Um, I've actually been using it when I have a sales proposal. Uh, I always for years have written a personalized note at the top of it that's specific to that company. And uh, what I've started to do is use a chat GPT assist for that. And I'll take mad notes during the sales call and then literally dump them into chat GPT and have that uh, formulate into a very personalized thank you letter. That's been very effective for me. Lisa Nalvin said, I'm creating a welcome packet for Airbnb and content copy for concepts and images on my next landing page. Elizabeth Millian said social media posts. Cynthia Bonner said, I'm job hunting. I've used it for my 30, 60, 90 day plans. <laughs> I've also used it for recipes for using certain leftovers. Jennifer Meyer said planning a trip, retirement planning, letters, emails, helping uh, uh, with creating procedures for business, re-safety, uh, regarding safety, stretch programs, air quality, et cetera. Uh, Amelia Williams from Argentina said, Yesterday, I used ChatGPT with my nine-year-old daughter who needed to make a water cycle project for school. So we were asking about precipitation, evaporation, and so on, and then making a video with Canva. Nicole, you uh, used it for a budget spreadsheet. I did. I did. And I did a budget that 
would have taken me hours and hours to do in like 30 minutes. I love it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to kind of get started with leveraging uh, ChatGPT uh, for and, and other AI tools for an analysis of data. Joe Descent, uh, that's part of Unit 7. I've used it to, re uh, Joe Descent said, I've used it to research human behavior issues, asking it to cite authorities. Um, what's happening now is when you do like Bing AI or, or, or Google Bard, it's adding citations and ChatGPT is even starting to add citations. And so we're getting from a place where the source of truth is murky to they're actually citing where they're getting the information, which is incredibly helpful because then you can fact check it, but you can also actually honor who the originator of the content was. Fernando de los Santos, who does web services, said meta descriptions for blog posts and website pages, keyword sorting and organization, social media posts, blog topics, emails. I see Jeff nodding his head on those SEO use cases. Halima uh, Shafiq said, I joke with my kids that if I used AI for romance, I would not be surprised if I ended up with Loeb responding. Thank you for bringing back Loeb. Loeb is that like horrible AI image, that uh, Frankenstein image that that AI created. Um, Alison Regley uh, said it helped me shortlist a new printer and do research on ink tank printers, cut the hours of research to three quarters of the time. Uh, Bard is best for dad jokes. That's a good pro tip, uh, MJ. Um, Hannah Tatch used it to make a social media content calendar. Um, MJ used it for great ideas for prizes in a bingo night. The messages just keep coming. It's incredible. I thought I was going to get to the end and I'm not sure I'm going to make it. Uh, so I think we'll stop there. I I'm so appreciative. You guys keep the ideas coming. We'll compile them into a resource. You know, AI is limited by your creativity. It is a tool just like a hammer where you can build any kind of house in any shape uh, to your specifications. And it's really only limited. Ironically, artificial intelligence is limited by human creativity. And so I hope maybe from that list, that long list and growing list of uses uh, that you can actually uh, get some inspiration for how you could use it. A um, couple others, uh, Joe Descent uh, used it for an AI, AML compliance issue. Stephanie Miller used it to research international travel. So there's just so many ways in which we can use these tools uh, in our lives. It also can amuse us. So I want to share this wonderful, wonderful AI-generated image. So uh, you may recognize the man on the right. Uh, he is the richest man in the history of the world. His name is Elon Musk. Elon Musk was one of the founders of OpenAI before he uh, started hating on it and sold his stake to Microsoft. And um, baby Elon is AI-generated. And it is just the cutest thing. Uh, and I just love uh, the like slight dig because uh, Elon is kind of out there talking about uh, how AI is going to uh, destroy the world. You might remember in unit one, we talked about how he called it summoning the demon. Uh, well, at the same time, he's investing in other AI companies. So talking a little bit out of both sides of his mouth, uh, he uses AI in all of his businesses, whether it's Tesla or SpaceX. And um, that was Elon, uh, uh, or at least uh, what who could have been Elon when he was a baby. The other thing is, uh, when I was in Denver recently and I was driving down the highway, uh, I saw what I think is maybe the first evidence that I've seen, uh, kind of the anti-AI backlash. Um, and it was a uh, local bank that said, chat with real people, not bots. Um, have you guys, Nicole or Jeff, seen any other evidence of the backlash and, and people kind of prizing the human to human over uh, or the human over the AI? I haven't seen any of this stuff. Yeah, the biggest for me I've seen is from the practitioners themselves, like you see even with some of the like writer protests in Hollywood or yeah. some of the, the folks even on our team that do copywriting and, and kind of yeah. really pushing for that human advocacy. Yeah, the, there's a writer strike in Hollywood right now. We were this close to having three different guilds in, in Hollywood all on strike at the same time. And one of the core complaints and concerns they have is that South Park episodes are going to start uh, being written by AI. Um, 
so uh, we're about to close the poll here on um, on AI and you. So if you haven't yet responded yet, please do now.